Hello and thank you for watching my channel. If you're in the market for a PoE switch or you want to learn more about PoE, then stay tuned for the rest of this video. As always, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of any new content. So let's talk briefly about what PoE is and the couple different standards that are available uh, that might make your shopping a little bit more confusing. So for the most part, PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet, which means you can use a standard Cat5, Cat6 cable and deliver both data and power to a device. So it makes it real handy for things like IP cameras, um, APs, you know, access points, wireless access points, and numerous other devices that can be powered off of PoE. So basically, you only have to run one cable, so it makes life a lot, a lot, a lot easier. Um, in terms of knowing what you need to know, there are two different, actually three, but primarily we talk about two different standards. There is a AF standard and the newer AT standard, uh, which is 802.3 AF and 802.3 AT. The main difference between the two is how much power they can deliver. So the older AF standard is slightly lower voltage, basically can run about um, 44 to 57 volts, and it's limited to about 15.4 watts. The newer AT standard, or PoE Plus they call it, it's got a little higher power envelope. It's 30 watts and basically 50 to 57 volts. Now. Why that's important is because you need to be able to get a switch that can support hopefully both of these standards. And if it doesn't, then you need to know what its limitations are. So for the most part, um, the amount of power you can deliver per port is critical if you're putting something like a, a camera in or another maybe more power hungry device. You need to understand that it's, it's, uh, there are some limitations which cycles me around to why we're, I'm doing this video is I've gone through a lot of PoE sw switches you know in the past five plus years um, some of them dying early and some of them just not doing what I need to do in terms of power delivery and I've run across this guy here which is a it's actually a BV Tech it's an eight port gigabit switch and it and each port supports either PoE or PoE plus so in other words, theoretically, any of these ports are capable of delivering 30 watts. Now, some things you need to keep in mind when it comes to this kind of stuff. Just because each port's capable of delivering um, 30 watts, you are still limited to a total power envelope, meaning whatever the switch is rated at um, in terms of its own internal power supply or the supplied power supply is all that it's going to be able to to produce. So if I have, in this case, this particular switch actually has a 130 watt uh, power envelope, which means that 130 watts can be distributed uh, to any of those ports, uh, but not to exceed 30 watts per port. Um, obviously with eight ports, I can't possibly get 30 watts out of each, all eight ports at the same time. That would not, that would far exceed the power envelope. Now that being said, this particular switch, um, again the the BV Tech, I'm really impressed with because I've had I have a couple of these, actually three of them, um, and the reason I use them is because they've been very reliable for me. And if you compare them to other switches, um, say Trendnets or TP-Links, Netgears, any of those, um, I find this to be a tremendous value. To me, it's and if you look at the switches, you look at the number of ports, and you look at the, the total power envelope for the price, it's really hard to beat. So I've been really impressed with them. Um, I had some trouble recently with a couple of TrendNet switches, which I've had to replace. Um, both were theoretically eight port switches, but had a power, uh, max power delivery of about 60, a little over 60 watts. So making it kind of inflexible for me, I could never really max it out. Um, aside from that, they were extremely unreliable, uh, frequently locking up and requiring, you know, 
uh, me to reboot the switch. With these, I haven't had any of those issues. Now, a couple other features to talk about this one. Um, for starters, it, it, it's either a... Um, you can either use the included legs to uh, make it a desktop version, or you can use the rack mounted, included rack mounted kit that comes with it to make it a rack mount device, whatever you want to use. Um, the real nice thing for me is that these are fanless. So even though there's no power brick, this plugs directly into the wall, there are no spinning fans in this thing. So I can really put these anywhere I want without creating a bunch of noise. It is an unmanaged switch, um, but again, if you go through feature by feature, um, you'll find that this is actually a pretty good value. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. I just wanted to give you a quick video, a quick overview of this particular product in case you're in the market for a PoE switch, looking for something reasonably priced, good performance. I'm actually going to deploy this one right now to drive um, about four cameras and an access point, so which will actually be located in my garage. So, um, and again, it's to replace a a dying trend net. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a short one today, but uh, I hope you found it useful. And if you did, don't forget to throw it a like and I'll catch you on the next one.